facts first because these, these are the people what ought to get fracked. Here are Countdown's nominees for today's top three worst persons in the world. The bronze to now self-destructing Illinois Congressman Joe Deadbeat Dad Walsh. He strikes again. About the Occupy movement, he say, I don't know how many veterans are part of the Occupy protest. I can't imagine it's many. But anyone who advocate, uh, would advocate socialist solutions to certain problems in this country, they don't understand this country. You know what socialist solutions are to Joe Walsh? That's a judge telling him he has to pay his good, hard-earned money to his ex-wife for child support for their kids. You know what socialism is to Joe Walsh? That's when he stops paying it, and the amount he owes her balloons to $117,000, and a judge still tells him he has to pay it anyway. Damned government overreach! The runner-up, the latest GOP presidential frontrunner, Newt Breakfast at Tiffany's Gingrich. It's hard to believe that the short shelf life of GOP frontrunners could go to your head, but Newt has let it do so. Speaking at Harvard, not many miles from the infamous 19th century, uh, century Massachusetts textile mills that were staffed by kids as young as eight, he proposed eliminating the 120-year-old laws against manual labor by children. You say to somebody, you shouldn't go to work before you're what, 14, 16 years of age? Fine. You're totally poor. You're in a school that is failing with a teacher that is failing. I've tried for years to have a very simple model. Most of these schools ought to get rid of the unionized janitors, have one master janitor, and pay local students to take care of the school. The kids would actually do work, they would have cash, they would have pride in the schools, they'd begin the process of rising. Gingrich then asked the crowd, are there no prisons? Plenty of prisons, said the gentleman. And the union workhouses, demanded Gingrich, are they still in operation? They are still, returned the gentleman. I wish I could say they were not. The treadmill and the poor law are in full vigor then, said Gingrich. Both very busy, sir. Oh, I was afraid from what you said at first that something had occurred to stop them in their useful course, said Gingrich. I'm very glad to hear it. But our winner, Mayor Michael Bloomberg and Police Commissioner Ray Kelly of New York City. Last night, they summoned on short notice a rare Sunday night news conference, among other things. They managed to distract and relocate most of the reporters covering the Occupy protest at Bloomberg's home. Then they breathlessly revealed an almost laughable supposed terror plot. They even released video of a car blowing up, which they pretended was what would have happened if 27-year-old Jose Pimentel had succeeded. The morons on local TV news here played the video as if it had something to do with Mr. Pimentel. Today, FBI sources told the Associated Press that they had twice warned New York that there was no threat, that Pimentel had neither the, quote, predisposition nor the ability to do anything on his own. Last night's arrest of a Muslim convert on charges of hoping to blow things up in New York and New Jersey comes just months after Bloomberg and Kelly were caught spying illegally on and trying to infiltrate Muslim groups in New York and New Jersey. And then suddenly they arrested a half-wit whom the grown-ups knew was no threat and then dramatically announced it on a Sunday night when there was no other local news to cover. It's the same old manipulation for political purposes of phony or exaggerated terror threats that stopped working for the Bush administration in 2006. Yet Bloomberg and Kelly still think we're all stupid enough to fall for it again. They are under attack, and justifiably so, for their recent fascist touches in the handling of Occupy and the persecution of minorities in New York City, and they are throwing anything they can think of at any wall they can see. Gentlemen, it won't stick. We're all on to you now. Just resign. Mayor Michael Bloomberg and Police Commissioner Ray Kelly of New York City, today's worst persons in the world.